Hi guys, it's Blackie. Okay, we're going to do an overnighter because my goal for this year is that I am going to do a overnighter every month of the year. Now thus far, I have done that. January, I went down to Mississippi and camped with Mr. Pink, which is uh, John Pinkard, and Homer Mayo and William Collins, and we camped out in Mississippi. Then in February, I went and camped out with the Southeast Bushcraft Base Camp up on Duggar Mountain, and we figured it got down like six that night. Um, then in March, we had my gathering. In April, me and Mr. Dakota went and camped out. And now here in May, I'm going to go camp out by myself. Now, this is actually the day before, because me and Miss Blackie are out here doing uh, just our time we've come out to Geneva State Forest where I hold my gathering and she wants to sit and look at the water and write letters to friends and things she does pen pal stuff and so I'm you know doing videos and stuff like that and so I'm gonna show you the content that I will be carrying for this coming camp out that way I ain't got to co go over it tomorrow and it'll be in the rest of this video this may be an, end up being a part one or two we'll see how big it goes but let's start now on me is going to be my first set of clothes that I'm going to be wearing, which will probably be some sort of good tough pants. It'll be a pair of jungle boots. I will be carrying my WC Blackbird knife with me, probably in Baldrick, if not hanging on my belt. And it may shift as the day goes by. Of course, my hat and some real light shirt. The temperatures right now are in the 80s, bordering on 90, and the humidity is somewhere in the 70s. So it's fairly muggy at times, but we've had an unusual cool spring and a cool snap here at the end. So we've got unusually cool wind, which is fantastic. I'm loving it. Ride by going fishing. So let's talk about what we're going to carry. Now, I'm going to be carrying my Blackbird haversack and my Nighthawk. So, what's going to be in the Blackbird? Now, I have a Blackbird that's attached to the top of my um, haversack right there, uh, to my rucksack right there. And what I'll do is I will simply pull out of this one and transfer directly into that one for the actual camp out. So, in the top flap, my standard loadout is going to be I've got some tinder, I've got a small bag that's got several bushcraft zip ties already packed into them. I have a wad of twist ties already hooked up. I have a bandana. I have an open L knife. I have a hunk of 550 paracord. I've got a uh, Exotac repair spool with fishing gear, uh, fishing hooks in it, and I've got one of the Viking sharpening stones from Wazoo. I've got my fork and knife spoon set right there. I have my backup flashlight that also opens up to become a small lantern that I can clip to a ridge line to illuminate an area with extra batteries. And I've got my small first aid kit, which is band-aids, salves, etc. And then finally, down here in the very bottom, I have my little compass to keep me from walking in a circle should I become disoriented somehow. That all rides up here in the top. This will be transferred to the top of that one for the trip. Inside I, of the main pocket, I have my stitchgear.com wax leather tender bundle. Now I've covered this many times in my videos, but there's three sources of ignition in here. There is a lighter, there is a um, uh, lifeboat matches, and then there is ferro rod. Then there's also three kinds of tender, including a hunk of fat wood. So therefore, it will ignite. I have got a way to get fire with this. In the main body besides that, I have another hunk of fat wood. I have a small hammock 
which is my ultralight hammock that I've shown before. And I've got my one wind ground sheet set up as an emergency shelter. Guess they didn't like the fishing down there. But that would be riding on top of the Nighthawk uh, rucksack. The strap will use it to connect the two together. Once I get to camp and I set up my camp, my Nighthawk will be hooked to a tree and the Blackbird will be taken off for me to wear. So as I do my scouting or whatever, I've got my full haversack with me, but it's part of the rucksack set to get it there. Okay? Okay, here is my Nighthawk rucksack. Here is the Blackbird that's empty already on top. One pair of Alice straps. On the outside of it, I've got my Himalayan Imports Kukri with a file on the back of it so I can sharpen it up in the field. I have a carrier that's from Camp Craft, and inside of it I have my Silky Saw. So that I can create at camp. So that right there, it snaps. It's simply being held to the webbing straps on this by soft shackles and bushcraft zip ties. On this side, I have a loop right here, and I've got a cabiner. And when I put it together, you'll see it. I'll clip my grail to the outside of it. The grail is going to be my primary water gather producer on this event. So I will be able to gather water with my uh, haversack and I'll be able to process water with this. So for cooking, drinking or whatever, it'll be this. And with that uh, beaner right there, it's easy to hook it on and off the pack. Okay. Now, inside the Nighthawk, there's a big pocket in the back. That's for a piece of foam and it doesn't come with that but you can find these everywhere and this is an old u.s army sleeping pad that i cut to this size this acts like a frame in it it also is something that at night if i'm gonna be a little bit cool i can put this underneath my back to help keep me warmer at night it's also something i can pull straight out as a sitting pad so if the ground's a little wet or whatever sap pine sap's all over the stump or something i can pull this out and sit down so it goes in first the advantage of this is I can open up the pack, fully loaded, and pull it straight out and put it back without having to unpack the pack. Just like that. Now, roll the top down just a little bit. Now, inside that sleeve, but facing me, I'm going to put it face up like this, I've got a big old trash bag. All I'm going to do is just fold that so it's relatively flat, and I'm going to slide that on the inside so this isn't against my back, the pad's against my back, but this is to the inside, okay? This will have multiple uses both as a rain cover should things go bad and also to be able to have something that I can make a well out of. We, uh, we're going to build a well this time while we're there at camp because I've had several people ask me to demonstrate it. I've talked about it. But I'm going to take my kukri and make a hole taking that dirt and move it over here and that mound of dirt is going to become where I'm going to build my campfire at. And in that hole I'm going to line it with that bag and then use my haversack to walk down to the water source, which is pretty good ways away, fill it up and come back and fill up that well I created, that plastic lined well. So I've got water right there at my fire for me to drink, process, and etc. I have to run down here in the woods because I want to get something to drink. I don't have to run to the woods. I've got water right there. Plus, should fire become an issue, I've got a ready supply of water right there I can use to help put the fire out with. Now, all the way in the bottom goes my clothes. Now this is a set of U.S. Army pants, a t-shirt, and a set of socks. 
bone dry and I've simply ranger rolled them. So it's this pad right here, ready to go. This will go in the very bottom. Middle lay flat. Right down there. Now, why do I put it in the bottom? I'm not gonna change clothes in a hurry, am I? When I get to camp tonight, or tomorrow night, excuse me, Excuse me, and once I've set up my shelter and everything else, most of the stuff's gonna be out of my bag. It's after, right at dark, I'm gonna take some water and wash off any sweat with my wash rag, my bandana, to cleanse myself because I'm done sweating for the day, okay? When I'm bone dry, that's when I'm gonna put on those clothes. These clothes that may be a little sweaty or whatever will be rolled up, range rolled just like that and become the pillow I'm gonna use tonight to sleep with. And so that could be a pillow, or it can be, so if these clothes aren't irky, I haven't sweated or whatever, and I intend to sleep in these clothes, that becomes the pillow to use in my hammock. If not, I use these clothes to become the pillow to sleep in the hammock. See what I'm saying? Now, the next thing that goes all the way to the bottom is going to be my cook set. You saw this in a recent video. It's the uh, Pathfinder one quart bush pot uh, camp taters, some spam in there, enough I can make a couple of meals right there. This is going to go into the bottom because I'm at camp before I pull this out, right? I'm going to go in and go to one side. Now on the other side, all the way in the bottom, I'm going to put an MRE. Now why carry an MRE? Because I bought a case of them 16 meals for 40 bucks okay this is the new style they've got that's much more compact than that old big bulky bag remember when i used to talk about having field strip and mre well these are stripped down and back and compressed a lot better now and since this will be fine to put down in the pack and should it turn inclement and go to raining like crazy which i'm down here near the gulf it could happen weather's going to be clear 30 minutes later it's booming and bamming you know 60 mile an hour wind this has got a flameless ration heater in it i can use this to heat up this chow even if it's pouring rain where i can't generate a fire so therefore plus it's got all the other little amenities in there to supplement my cook set so it's going to go down here Now, my bedding in the hammock. My bedding, because the temperature is only going to be down in the mid-60s, is going to be a wooby. I'm a very warm sleeper, so this will be more than enough for me. What I'll do is I'll take one in and tie all the things in to make a foot that I can use this as a top quilt once I get into the hammock. And I've demonstrated that before, where I'll throw this over the ridge line, I'll get in the hammock, I will then take my boots off. I will clip my boots to the ridge line so that no bugs, no critters are going to move in and make a new home out of them. And you know that big cabiner? That's what that'll be used for. I'll clip my boots on top. I'll show you that later. And therefore, I will then slide in to the footer pull it up over me, roll to one side, tuck it under, roll to the other side, tuck it under, and it's almost 360 around me. I'll be fine till morning. So that's all I'm gonna need for bedding. And this will wedge very nice down here in this bottom right hand side beside my tip chip. And it can pack down just like that. Now, my hammock that I'm going to be using. And this is the one wind hammock that has the zip on, zip off mosquito net because it's about to be June. Skeeters are everywhere down here, guys. And so if you don't have wind like you got right now, they will eat you alive. So you got to have a bug screen or you ain't going to sleep. That's all there is to it. They're going to be landing on your face all night like that. And next morning you're going to wake up like that chicken box. So having some sort of mosquito net you got to, and so I'm carrying one with a mosquito net. But this is more compact than the full size set that I normally use, which has the full size uh, bug net. 
So this is a little more compact. And it will wedge right in there between the top of the cook kit and my, um, on top of my bedding. Now, the tarp set that's going to go on top. This is the one win um, tarp that the ends will close. It's just like a hanging tent. With this, I can set it wide open, and you're going to see how I set this up and allow me to have breeze during the day. But should the weather turn inclement bad, I can close the doors on the end and snap them in place quickly without having to get up and do a whole lot and be able to be enclosed in case it's blowing rain and etc. So this will go very well with that other. This will go across the top. Now even though that fills it up, there's still plenty of room in the Nighthawk for food or whatever. So now around here on this side I talked about, I'll take that cabiner. I'm going to put the grail through that loop I had down there on the bottom I already showed you. And I'm going to pull the snap up here and go through one of my side belt loops just like that. Now when it settles down in there like that, I'll get you up close a minute and let you see. It'll hold the bottom of the grail in place and the top is held by the cabiner. So I can unhook the grail and pull it right off and be able to drink. Put it back on. My kukri is available right out on the outside where I can grab it. Easy to get. And so is my saw on the front. Now to close it up, I have the Nighthawk has a ring on either side. All I've done is got one of them cheap little cabiners. Okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take it and I'm going to roll it toward me or right away from me, whichever one you want to do. And I'm going to roll her down tight, lifting up. And when I get it up here, I'm going to do like this and pull it together. And I'm going to snap it. Just like that. If I wanted to, I could even go underneath one of those loops and hook from the loop and come up here and snap it. You can do that if you want to as well. But this will hold it. Now once I transfer my stuff, my haversack will come across the top. The handle for the haversack becomes the grab handle. Let me give you a better look now that I've got it loaded. Okay, here's the whole set ready to go. I have my sidearm, which will be on my side. Here is my grail that is easily accessible. There is my saw. There is my kukri. There is the back where that pad is right there patting me against anything rubbing against me. I still have multiple D-rings, multiple places I can anchor other gear onto here. It's all ready to go. Other than transferring and putting my stuff from my haversack into this haversack, that's it. We're ready to go. So that is the loadout that I'm taking for this overnight. I will be, oh, one other thing. Let's cover that. Since it is summertime, I will quite often carry a sidearm or something with me. Those of you that follow my channel know my love for cabin ball revolvers because they are actually very practical once you get skills with them. So, we have had big hogs show up in the area. There have been black bears sighted in the area I'm going to. Not in the last few days, but a couple of months ago. And not at this exact place, but a few miles down at the river. So the odds of encountering a bear or encountering a big boar are low, but not zero. It's low, but not zero. Plus the fact of snakes. Now the area I'm going to is kind of open like you see here. It's put down there at a place I go to that, that you see me a lot of videos. It's backside of the shooting range that I'm part of that shooting club. And it's the primitive camping area is where I'm going. So I don't have to worry about too much about snakes at my feet. I can see them far enough out. Especially once I clear my camping area out, I'll be fine. But I do need something in case because the odds are low, but not zero. So I will be carrying down there my 1861 
36 Navy, which I call Stormborn. I haven't carried her in a while. And so it's her turn to go camping. I took Shallow out last time, which is my 1860 Army. Now it's a 36. I feel confident with this that if I encountered something, I can defend myself or at least make enough racket to make it go somewhere else, okay? Against Snake or etc. Now let's talk about choice here for a second. If I was going someplace that was worse, and I know places like that, where the risk of bear is higher and the risk of encountering big hog is higher and snake is higher, I will be carrying my single shot shotgun or my pump at that time because of the odds of encountering something are much higher. So I need to be able to take care of situation, right? I also have an 1871 open top in 45 Colt, which would also serve. So right now I don't want to be so encumbered. Yes, I could carry a long gun, but notice that my hammock, and you'll see this, and I'm gonna demonstrate how I'm gonna put it. My hammock has a zip-in liner. I'm not going to be in there with my long gun. I would set up some fork sticks outside like a gun rack up at a level where I could reach out and get it. But I'd have to unzip to get out. So if I carry a sidearm, I can put it inside the hammock with me. So that if I wake up and there's a large hog or something sniffing me talking about a burrito, I've got the ability right then. See? And so that's the reason I'm going with the sidearm instead of toting my long gun. The, it should be a fairly low in this area to encounter a large hog or bear. Should be just about zero, but Murphy's Law. So therefore we're going to be prepared. Now that we've done the loadout, let's go camp, guys. 